Well, I think it's a reminder that the trade war is a multiplayer game. Sometimes people talk as if it's just between the United States and China. But actually, uh, the Trump administration is fighting on numerous fronts. You could also have mentioned Japan. I think the European case is interesting, though, because in some ways the Europeans find themselves between the devil and the deep blue sea. They're, they're under considerable pressure uh, from the United States, not just over Airbus, which is just the latest issue, but also over automobiles. I wouldn't be at all surprised if the president announced uh, tariffs on European automobiles uh, next month. He has mm. certainly got the option to do that, and that would hurt the German economy especially hard. Uh, at the same time, President Trump feels that the Europeans aren't paying their way for defense because their defense budgets are well below the NATO target of 2 percent. So he's coming after them on, on not just over trade and not just over Airbus. Meanwhile, the Chinese have been making for some years a play uh, for Europe, in investing in Europe and most recently persuading the Italian government to sign a memor memorandum of understanding right. uh, towards the so-called One Belt, One Road or Belt and Road Initiative. So it's, uh, it's a difficult position that the Europeans find themselves in because they're well aware that, that the Chinese money comes with strings attached. In fact, you went so far in your column over the weekend to say that Donald Trump is the one check on China's European march. So this is a, interesting because at the top of the hour, we spoke to Larry Lindsay who said, you, you know, not fighting these wars is not a long-term strategy either. Now you're saying, in, the U, in a way, the U.S., if they don't, you know, if they don't fight these wars, is if they do, they're letting China make some inroads, right? Because it's weakening the traditional alliances that we've seen. But Larry's saying if we don't fight them, then the U.S. has no seat at the table for getting better terms on trade. So it feels like we're stuck between a rock and a hard place, too. Well, I think the way to, to conceive of this is the way that Henry Kissinger does. The Chinese are gradually bidding for dominance in the whole Eurasian landmass, with Russia as the junior partner in what amounts to an alliance, and the Belt and Road Initiative, or One Belt, One Road, spreading Chinese influence right across Eurasia all the way as far as Europe. And the question for the United States is, what relationship do you want to have with Europe, the old transatlantic alliance of the Cold War seems in many ways played out, and the president himself clearly doesn't have a very keen commitment to it. So the Kissinger analogy is that essentially the United States becomes the balancing power, a little bit like Britain in the 19th century, mm. offshore, but balancing to try to stop China taking the whole Eurasian landmass under its influence. So, so this is going to involve a significant reconfiguration of the transatlantic relationship, but I think that's overdue.